Welcome back. We're still working on the swim bait that we've been working on for the last three videos. If you haven't seen that, here's a link. I think it's over here. It's probably over here. Last time we left this, we had worked out the weight and balance. We had figured out where to put the uh, toe eye. We had the general shape. I still had to reshape one of the segments. And now we need to do the final assembly. To do the final assembly, you really need to know exactly where and how much weight you're going to put. I, I had the gross amount of weight for each one of these pieces to make it do what I wanted to do. And last time, if you'll remember, I talked about the last two pieces. I like to keep them right around neutral, maybe just slightly heavier than neutral. And the two front pieces, I want those to be the driving pieces that force the lure to sink. So that means I add uh, a little more than their neutral buoyant uh, weight. With this lure, because the resin I'm using to, uh, to make it, or I used to make it, uh, was so light. I had actually cast a block of this stuff a while back, and I made it with my normal 10% mix, which is really light. Not real good for this. I should have made it with like a 2% mix of uh, uh, micro balloons. And so what that results in is a very buoyant piece with very little volume on the inside since I have to cut these slots. So that means I have to find some part of the volume in there to drill into and add all that weight. The head isn't as bad as the rest of the pieces. Uh, those other ones will be challenging. To be able to do all that, I essentially had to share the load between the two front pieces since the middle piece now is pretty pretty bulky. So looking down here, the head needed 18 grams and the, the second piece needed 10 grams, less the hardware, and it turned out to be around 23 grams for both of them. Uh, but I shared that load, pushing most of it to the head. So 10 grams in the second piece, 13 grams here. And then the back, I worked the same kind of calculation and I shared those uh, weights where I could fit them so this one got a little more so 10 grams in the very back and 9 grams on that uh, third piece so let me go over to the workbench and show you what else I've done so I had to do a little extra work with reshaping the uh, piece that actually turned out to be a little too small not enough volume in it to uh, allow for the weight so I reshaped it at this is the piece that I cast in that last uh, video it's white resin and it's my 2% mix, so it's a little denser. Gave me a break on the weight. And then I worked on getting the uh, tie-on eye location, just like I did on the board, but I had to do it on this. So you can see, I've also uh, fine-tuned my uh, little uh, hinge plates. I cut all the hinge pins, and I'll be using uh, half hinge pins. So one for the top and one for the bottom, just so I don't have to worry about uh, drill alignment. That makes it a lot easier. You gotta remember, the real beauty here structurally uh, when you divide the load between two hinges each hinge is actually feeling half the load before I get into putting in the weights I wanted to show you one more thing I am planning to use uh, this hook eye as one of my hinge pins uh, I do this a lot uh, it kind of reduces the weight a little bit I don't really need to do that in this one but what it does for me is uh, gives me a break from trying to find another place for this thing knowing that I need all this volume in here for the weight. These are the kind of weights I'm going to be using. Uh, I may be kind of scraping away some of these just fringes and maybe even blunting it off just to make it more efficient. So let's get started.
Okay, what a mess. All right, we got it weighted. I'm gonna go ahead and, and put a little bit of uh, two-part resin to fill all this stuff up so I can sand it back. And then we'll get to the assembly. Let's use the baking powder trick on the ones that are, don't need much. JB Weld putty. We'll cut a little piece off. Don't need very much. You know you've got it mixed well when it's all one color. Now to keep your fingers from sticking, you can put a little alcohol on your fingers and it uh, helps you not stick and helps you shape it a little bit. All right, I'm gonna let this stuff set. I'll come back and sand and we'll get to the paint. I'm pretty happy with the way they look and the way they feel right now. So the next step is really to get these things sealed or at least more or less covered with some paint. So I'm gonna go ahead, figure out some ways to put some hangers on this guy and then I'm gonna paint them with just an automotive uh, primer, white. Let's go ahead and paint them out here because I don't want to fill that uh, space with fumes. I'm using Rust-Oleum 2X. It's just a flat white primer. Okay, so that should do it. It's just a matter of letting it dry. Well, these pieces are pretty much dry. They're still a little bit tacky, so I'm going to have to leave them for a little while before I actually do an assembly here. But in the meantime, I've got to decide on these hooks. These are one aughts. I'm not sure whether these are the right size. Uh, they look right about appropriate. Uh, but why don't you guys let me know? I don't do a bunch of really big lures. So this being about uh, seven and a quarter inches long. What size? treble hook would you use? Let me know. Give me a comment. It would be nice to learn from you guys. I need to create uh, a little weight to sort of mimic the uh, the hooks because I don't want to put hooks on it when I'm testing it. Because I found that I have terrible luck when I do that. I either get hung up on something or a fish actually hits it and uh, pulls my lure apart because I don't have it assembled right. So the hook and the split ring is about two, 2.54 grams and I'm gonna make a clip and weight a little assembly here and that's exactly the right weight and that's mostly luck. All I do is, is take this split shot just take a pair of pliers and pinch it in and there's my weight and I'll have two of them so when I assemble it I'll leave a little bit of the pin sticking out of the top and I'll just drop a little droplet of uh, of this UV resin glue and this way uh, when I'm done I can just pull it all apart pry it apart uh, this way I can paint it and make sure I get all the gaps so we're gonna have to wait a few hours for this stuff to really dry well and then I'll go ahead and go through the assembly which is nothing just dropping these pins in uh, temporarily into the slots and tomorrow in the morning when we have good light we'll go down to the dock and put this thing in the water it's the next day. I'm three quarters of the way through on this assembly uh, and I've just got to put the head on. Let me show you what it looks like. I put this cloth on here to spare you the glare on the glass. So the method I'm using is, is very temporary. So I'm, I'm sticking these pins in and I'm leaving them long and uh, that's so that I can uh, extract them later. I've got one little droplet of UV glue on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to this assembly. It's pretty simple. I'm just putting half pins in. So what that means is I'm splitting that pin so it isn't one pin all the way through. On this one I'm using a screw eye 
But because they, they fit kind of loosely, I've got to glue them as I go along. Or else they'll, if I flop it over, it'll just fall out. So I'm going to put a drop of clear, clear UV resin and take it over to the UV light. And I'll just give this probably eh, 10 seconds, should do it. It's not a permanent connection, so I'm not really worried. Just need it to hold together as I test it on the, on the lake. I should do it. All right, now, now I just need to put that last pin in and we should be good. All these pins sticking out, I, it reminded me of something I realized it's Halloween. This looks like Pinhead from Hellraiser. Just just in time for Halloween. But we got this tank, so let's might as well just test it. That's just about how I want it. When I put the hooks on it, it'll sink a little faster, and that's even better. So that's got it together. Uh, and it has that just crazy fluid flowing swing to it and it'll actually just sort of fold up on itself. Now is the moment of truth. Let's go down to the water and uh, see if it actually swims. Okay, it's a little windier and it's a lot more overcast than I thought it was gonna be. So I'm gonna have to take the boat over across the lake out of the wind and hopefully the water will be calmer. All right, so we're over in the calm side of the lake and Let's throw it in the water, let's see what it looks like, and then I'll go ahead and drag it behind the boat and get some water water shots. So what I see right now... is the very end of the lure it wants to swim. And the front part, that second piece, which I expected to do a little better. Oh man, that's scary. I think what's going on is there's just a little too much friction on that, on the hinges on this second piece. Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna have to rework this hinge. I can feel it. it's a little stiff right in there. These are flowing really nicely. Uh, I'm just going to have to widen these gaps just a little bit and I think it'll improve it. Let's go ahead and run it underwater. I was really hoping that it would swim more like how it swings, which is very fluid like. But right now, it's really just swimming with those back two pieces. I think a lot of it is friction. Some of it might be that new piece that I had to shape at a different material. It might be throwing off the action. So I'm going to keep experimenting with this, try to get it just right. And then the next time you see it, it'll be painted and probably fishing. So thank you for watching. This is the end of this particular series. I've gotten a bunch of questions, so I'll probably do another uh, subscriber Q&A on the next video, and then we'll move on to something a little more interesting than that. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you hadn't. Hit that like button, and I'll catch you on the next video.